Hello, everybody. Today's video is going to talk about these solar panels that have been living on my roof for about six months. Sort of second part of the story if you've watched the lightweight roof rack video I did. And these solar panels are made by a company named Robot EOS. In the roof rack video, I said I wasn't sure if these panels would be available anymore, but I did hear back from the company and they are starting to stock them again. Their other product, kind of like their flagship product, which is like the solar tracking solar panel arrays, Last time I checked, those are still backordered, but Tom, who I believe is the co-founder of the company, did email me and say that they have found a way to stock these panels again. But before I dive too much into the weeds about these specific solar panels, I wanna say that the second thing we're gonna be talking about in this video is what happened to my light leaf panels that were up here before. And before any of that, I just wanna preface this entire video by saying a few things about lightweight solar panels and just like photovoltaic systems in general. Every time a new product comes out, kind of pushing the lightweight mobile solar panel market forward, I'm interested in it. I want it to do well. Renewable energy sources are the future. Solar charging has enabled things in my life and allowed me to like recreate in ways that no other technology could. In a completely different avenue of my life, I've carried this tiny little solar panel on top of my backpack for a couple thousand miles. And what this has allowed me to do is essentially recharge my little battery bank which then allows me to charge things like my phone for emergencies and communication or my headlamp. And this has enabled me to be out in the wilderness longer, not having to come back in for any sorts of amenities. And this little like less than three ounce panel, nothing else exists in the world that I could just carry out there at such a small footprint and such a small weight that would enable me to do this. And scaling up to vans, it's basically the same thing. There's no other technology that can do what solar panels do right now. You can essentially park in the middle of nowhere, and if you build your van efficiently, then day in, day out, your solar panels will allow you to do things like cook, have lights, use your laptop, and just generally have your van function. And I know you could say, oh, our generator could do that, but it's loud, it's noisy, it's heavy, it needs fuel. Solar panels are just this out of sight, out of mind solution that already has just like revolutionized the ability of people and their campers to be able to stay out in the middle of nowhere for essentially an endless amount of time. And somewhere at the intersection of this tiny little solar panel and campers is basically my interest and my hope that lightweight solar panel designs continue to evolve and improve. The traditional thick framed heavy and clunky panels are sort of archaic when we apply them to like this growing like mobile adventure market. We want light, fast, sleek, low profile, and those thick framed panels are just none of those things. Lightweight solar options are such a better option for this market, be that RVs, campers, vans, boats, other marine vessels, all of them are looking for a better lightweight solar solution. I mean, if I had put 800 watts of traditional solar panels on this roof, it would have been over 100 pounds. That would have been about 10% of the weight of this entire conversion. And that includes things like a fridge, an air conditioner, the battery system, all the furniture, 10% of that would have been solar panels. That just seems outrageous. It seems like there's gotta be a better, lighter weight solution. Those clunky residential panels though, one thing you can't argue about is their dependability. They just work year in, year out. At this point, I don't think any of the flexible panels, even like those SIGS panels out there, are actually very dependable. Sure, they have like some indestructible properties, but I don't need a panel that I could like drive over or shoot with a gun. I just need a panel that won't delaminate after the first year or two. And at this point, every single one of those like flexible panels you glue down, I've just seen them delaminate very quickly. And that might partially be because of where I live, kind of the high desert, we get a lot of sunshine here. But I digress. So the unicorn I've been looking for is a dependable, lightweight, relatively well outputting solar panel. And are these robot EOS panels the solution for that? And the reality is I can't fully answer that today. These panels have been on my roof for about six months and they do come with a 10 year warranty, but I won't fully know until that time comes. You know, I can't see into the future, but let me tell you about my experience with these panels so far. First off, I was on a mega time crunch when filming the install of these things to the point where I actually forgot to shoot any of that like slow-mo, slow pan, like sexy footage as I'm unboxing and the panels are nice and new. That footage is always really useful for video makers like me so you don't have to watch my stupid face. But even more importantly, I think to the people watching the videos, it actually is really helpful to kind of see how they're built and get some nice up close detail. So I do apologize, I didn't film any of that footage. Each of these panels is rated for 200 watts and mine actually weighed right around 12 and a half pounds each. 
The website states that they should be just under 10 pounds. Don't get me wrong, 12 and a half pounds is great. That's right about half the weight of like a traditional solar panel. But for a gram counter like me, gaining an extra 10 pounds across all four of these panels, I was a little bit disappointed to see that. Build quality was as expected, which is great when it comes to solar panels. These are a utilitarian product. They're not some like heirloom piece. They felt well made, well thought out, and the aluminum frame for like through bolt mounting was very intuitive. I used M6 size fasteners to hold this down through the frame, and given the size of these pre-drilled holes, it's a pretty precise operation. There isn't a whole lot of wiggle room. I definitely spent some extra time making sure my fasteners would line up once I put these things on top of the roof rack. And if you install these, be prepared for that necessary precision as well. Emailing with Robot.eos, they said I didn't need to use all the holes around the perimeter. So if you are wondering, that is why I alternated leaving the holes empty. So let's talk about maybe the most important thing, and that is how well are these things outputting? As you can see today, it's pretty cloudy. We're actually supposed to finally get some rain, but it's been a very dry like last month. These things are filthy and dusty, and most of the time the van has been parked either under a tree or I just haven't been using it. I'm terrible at routine tasks like keeping my solar panels clean. I know I should do better about this. Now to quantify how these solar panels are doing, it's not quite as straightforward as like a residential solar panel setup. You know, once you're like tied into the grid, the grid is basically collecting anything your house can generate basically throughout the day. So you can kind of look at total yield and decide how well your solar panels are doing. In a camper like this though, quite often before the sun's very high in the sky, the battery bank has topped off. So the solar panels stop producing. And as a result, to me, maybe a better indicator of how these solar panels are doing is not to try to understand total yield because there's very few days where the actual panels are outputting the entire day, but rather to look, do we ever get close to like that 800 watt rated capacity? In the course of travel, there will be times when like conditions are prime for like full output. That means like maybe it just rains so the solar panels are clean, it's not too hot outside, and the sun is nice and high in the sky. So at some points, we should get an indicator of what the maximum capacity and output of these panels is. And with that said, did these panels ever record impressive numbers? Yes. When I first rolled the van out of the shop after the install, the panels were actually outputting over 800 watts. I've never had this happen with like any other solar array I've installed on a van. Since the panels are really clean, it's usually outputting somewhere really close to its rated output, but I've never actually seen a solar array output above what the total number of watts I've put up there is. Needless to say, I was completely impressed by this, but like the real question is, would it happen again? Now, I wasn't very methodical about actually downloading the data throughout the summer, and it turns out between the installation in May and now, I basically have two months worth of data, one of those months being what I just collected this morning, so that's kind of like the full time, you see how dirty the panels are, but my data from June, the other month that I have, shows equally impressive results. Looking at the data from that month, we've got one on our day here, June 26th, where we saw a max output of 813 watts. That's again above the capacity. And scrolling down, we had three other days in the 700s. We've got a 772, a 767, and a 742. So I fully think that given whatever conditions were happening that day, maybe the battery bank was actually drawn down because we were like using the air conditioner or we were like up in the mountains so it was actually cooler, these panels actually output what they're supposed to or even above it potentially, which I've never seen happen in any other like photovoltaic system that I've installed on a roof. Super impressed. Can't say enough good things about this. Time will tell if next summer yields similar results. You know, five years ago, if you had asked me about solar panels with like plastic top sheets, a lot of them were liable to start getting kind of hazy or start yellowing from the sun. Nowadays though, plastics are constantly improving, UV coatings, UV resistant things are constantly getting better. So I hope that given the fact that these panels have a 10 year warranty, that this product will hold up and continue to do well. Besides the stellar output, I don't have a whole lot else to say about these panels at this point. They are low profile, they are lightweight, they are sleek. That is what I wanted. So I am really happy about those like, kind of design features. And so far they have exceeded my expectations in terms of output. And all of that has happened for less than half the price of my previous solar panels, those light leaf panels. So let's switch gears and talk about what happened with those now. The light leaf story, or I guess the story of my specific experience with their solar panels has already been partially documented in two videos. I've got like the initial install video, and then I've got a second follow-up video where I actually destroyed the first set of panels by installing them with bolts that had thread locker on them. 
This was an expensive and frustrating way to learn that plastics and thread lockers uh, don't mix. The company was surprised by this. I was surprised by this. Today, if you go to the Lightleaf website, it's not possible to buy their panels. I don't know if that's because I'm viewing the website from the United States, and maybe due to everything that's going on with trade, they're just not selling it to the United States. I don't know if unfortunately maybe the company's not doing very well, or perhaps they've just gone to a model where they're selling to like builders and like wholesalers because maybe the DIY market, it was just a little too complicated of an install to have end users and they were having issues, which is what I experienced as well. Now, those lightly panels were sexy. That carbon fiber backing, the curvature to them, the best weight to watts output was fantastic. They were made in Canada, that was great to see, but all of those great features equated to like a very hefty price tag. But as I said at the start of this video, I am so excited for the product they're making. Nimble, sleek panels like this have a far greater potential for applications. Like on their website, check out this like bike packing setup where someone has a solar panel. It would be sweet to like go touring on an e-bike that basically charges itself as you use it so you can have far greater range than what is available right now. Anyways, why I personally took these panels off my roof and kind of moved on to a new product is again due to how I mounted them. Now, I unfortunately can't find the original like documentation. I think it was like a sheet of paper that came with the panels and I threw it away or I'm not sure I didn't save it to my computer. But when I purchased these panels, the instruction manual was basically like a half sheet that said, throw some bolts through the edge of them and you're good to go. Since then, due to the Loctite incident, the instruction manual started to have a big thing about not using thread lockers on them. And then even more so, it had to do with thermal expansion, which is sort of what led to kind of like the demise of my panels. Now I do want to say my panels still work, but one day I was actually at my mom's house up in Washington, so I could see up on the roof based on how the van is parked, and I could see in the light that there was this kind of waviness starting, and upon closer inspection, there was some just like signs of delamination starting, and it turns out the way I mounted my panels with these little aluminum brackets didn't allow for enough thermal expansion. I had assumed those little brackets would flex just whatever small amount needed, basically daily as the panels expanded and contracted, but that just wasn't true. And Lightleaf's instructions in that same time, kind of concurrently as this happened, started to address that you needed to account for this as well in your installation. They recommended nylock nuts from the backside so that the panels could basically move around, oversizing the holes for the bolts a little bit. And unfortunately, my setup was just too rigid and kind of led to this, uh, I guess too much strain on like that top sheet, not being able to move back and forth. And I was basically left at this point where I was looking at like a third time of remounting these panels. I don't know where to lay the blame on this. I think in some ways I felt like I, I entered the light leaf market in kind of a guinea pig phase where some of the things that happened to me led to them refining their instructions. But I also do think that part of it is on me. Um, anyways, I would say my take home message from the light leaf panels is if you buy them, Make sure you follow their instructions to a T. The company was always great to me. They always communicated through my troubles. They never tried to like avoid the problems. And they did give me a small price break up front. And then they offered to give me more money back after I had these issues. So thanks slightly. Um, I have a project in mind for your panels, but unfortunately it's just gotten kicked down the road a little bit. I have a project where some lightweight panels would work perfectly, the ones you have, but that's how time goes. Right now, these panels are kind of relegated to this little corridor um, that I jokingly call is where like half finished projects go to die at this point in my shop, but hopefully I will get around to it. So to close out, I hope both of these companies thrive and continue to do well. I think if you do need a panel that's kind of mobile, like you gotta move it around, maybe you gotta set it outside your van, I think the Lightleaf panel is a fantastic product. And again, follow the instructions if you decide to mount, like kind of hard mount one somewhere. The Robot EOS product though, it comes in at less than half the price. The output is better than anything I've ever seen. And there are half the weight of traditional panels. To me, it's a fantastic product. The only real question mark is longevity. Um, they do have a 10 year warranty, as I said, and so far I've been nothing but impressed by them. And there are other companies that are also kind of advancing this field and that's great. I hope more and more companies come on board. I hope like those flexible panels that I complain about delaminating, They'll get their adhesives figured out and we can start to use those panels as well. You know, like Bila Solar or Bila Solar out of Indiana is an American company that came on board a couple years ago. They are making these 17 pound, 520 watt semi-flexible panels that look fantastic and they offer a 25 year warranty. 
So whatever technology they've got in there, they've obviously got something to back that they're gonna last a long time. Unfortunately, the size of those panels would not work for my camper van, but perhaps they'll have different sizes available in the future. And if I could ever get my hands on one of their panels to play around with it, I would absolutely love to see how it's made, how it handles and how it performs. This whole kind of field of lightweight solar feels a lot to me like lithium. You know, 10, 15 years ago, if you had lithium batteries in your van, they were extremely expensive and they were kind of seen as this like technology of the future. I kind of think lightweight solar panels are gonna go the same way or just solar in general. We're gonna have far greater efficiency, far less weight in the future. So it's exciting to see these companies getting in on that early. And I really do think that that is the future and that's how things are gonna go. So I'm very excited for it. Thank you everyone for watching. Sorry it took me so long to put this video together and kind of give a follow up on what happened with the light leaf panels as well as what these new panels are. Thank you again for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it and I'll see everyone next time. Look, my son driver. No, I forgot. Oh. Where's my dog? What's he doing? Yogi! Yogi!